So our aims were to see whether those with positive self-perceptions of ageing reported better functional health over an 18 year period than those with negative perceptions of ageing. So we conducted a longitudinal study. Um, we had six intervals and the participants had to report their self-perceptions of ageing and we also asked them further questions regarding their functional health. Um, this was a self-report measure. The following footage will highlight how positive or negative self-perceptions of ageing can influence functional health over an 18-year period. So, I've retired about eight years or so ago now and I'm, I'm really struggling to fill my days. I mean, my husband still works full-time, my kids have moved away so I'm I'm getting quite lonely really and I don't have many friends in the village so I just I spend most of my days here really but that's how I see my future going. How do I feel about getting older? Just your general thoughts. Ooh, well, I don't really see it as getting older, I see it more as a target to the retirement. Um, so I retire in two years um, and I've been at the company for 40 so that should make a brilliant retirement party. Um, so I'm currently planning a trip to Iceland actually with a group of friends, so that should be fun and um, oh, me and my husband are um, expecting our first grandchild in four months so it's fair to say we're very excited about that. I don't suppose you've got a pillow or, or just something to put a back? Yeah, I've had yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm just, yeah, oh, yeah. Perfect, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, that's, that's better. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, what have I been up to? I've, um, oh yeah, I went on, um, went on holiday with my husband to Spain for a week. That was, I guess it was nice, but, oh, that heat, I just, I can, I can really feel myself getting older these days. Oh, I've, um, I've got my daughter coming down in a month or so. That'll be, that'll be something to keep me busy. She's, um, she's had her first son now. I think he's about four months, so it'd be good to see him for the first time, but, I doubt I'll see them very regularly. I've um, had a hip operation as well, and since then I just, I just can't get out of the house. So I think for the, for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to be here really. Okay, so I've got three beautiful grandchildren now. Um, Amy has just started primary school, but um, still means I'm kept busy with Oscar and Jonathan. No rest for the wicked. Um, the holiday was brilliant, we had a great time, um, so I'm really looking forward to my retirement and perhaps another grandchild. I'm really still struggling with this old hip these days, so I've just I spend most of my days in bed just because it, it really hurts to get up and about. I've, um, there's some sponsored walks going on that I'd, I'd love to do, but I'm just... I'm just too old for it really, I just spend my days here watching watching the old television and oh that reminds me actually I must get my husband to to record countdown, I'm, I'm not very good with these digi boxes. The whole technology thing really, really confuses me. I've been so busy recently so you have to excuse me, I'm going to have to keep working as I'm talking to you. Um, retirement's been pretty good, it's been pretty good, um, I've just seen Amy off to uni um, she's with a lovely fellow I hear. Oh, that reminds me, I must add FaceTiming her to my to-do list. Sorry. Right, there we go. I'll remember now. Um, so I've been on lots of sponsored walks. I've got one coming up soon, which I'm going to have to start training for. Oh, I might have to buy some trainers actually. Sorry, you'll just have to excuse me. One second, sorry. We found that self-perceptions of ageing do predict functional health, with positive self-perceptions leading to better functional health. We found this to be unidirectional, with the perception leading to the health behaviour, rather than health predicting their self-perceptions. We also discovered that perceived control was a significant mediator for these results. We suggest that future research looks into potential other mediators that must also be present. Also, this study was conducted on all white people from Ohio in America. These people do not suffer from the impacts of other stereotype threats. It will be interesting to conduct this research on more minority groups in order to discover whether there is a difference between these groups. 
So, two years on from our research, Levy and Myers in 2004 looked at further mediators and found that a balanced diet, exercising and socialising can all lead to better functional health. Bayer and colleagues in 2015 also supported this by finding that positive self-perceptions are mediated by physical activity. It was also clear from our research that we needed to explore how and why these stereotypes become embodied. Levy, in 2009, discovered that stereotype embodiment occurs across the lifespan and becomes embodied unconsciously. These stereotypes gain salience from their perceived self-relevance and can utilise multiple pathways. They can be both negative and positive. Cultural factors, like receiving an OAP bus pass, reinforces these stereotypes. A further limitation of our research is it was conducted on all white American participants. However, Gu and colleagues in 2017 conducted a similar experiment on Chinese participants. They went further than functional health and found that negative self-perceptions of ageing, including uselessness, can lead to higher mortality rates. Now, China is more of a collectivist culture, so perhaps have more of a need for usefulness than individualist cultures such as America. Another limitation of our research was that our measure of functional health was self-reported. In 2018, we looked at a clinical measure of functional health, dementia. It was discovered that those carrying the AOPE gene, which is associated with dementia, were 49.8% less likely to develop dementia when they had positive age-related beliefs. We proposed that this is related to the physiological effects of stress. However, further research could examine this. All of the following research has shown that positive effects of ageing can have positive consequences later in life. So, we want you to make a list of some positive outcomes of ageing.